Well, how's everybody doing this wonderful day? I hope everybody is doing just fine. I hope God bless you through the week. I hope that he supplied all your needs and took care of you. Because we serve a wonderful God. We serve an awesome God and we serve a mighty God. And with that, I can say thank you, God. I can say thank you, Jesus. I can say thank you, Holy Spirit. And I can say thank you, God, for your words. For your words. Before I give, I, before I give started, I want to give honor to God. I want to give honor to Jesus Christ. I want to thank him for the Holy Spirit that enables us to live the life that we live now in Christ Jesus. I want to thank us for his salvation and his freedom that we got through his son, Jesus Christ. I want to thank him for eternal life that we get through his son, Jesus Christ. You understand? Jesus Christ is our foundation, and that's what we must build on. And Jesus Christ was a gift from God to us. Jesus Christ was a gift from God to for us that we can be new. So, you know, since God gave us that almighty gift, his son, Jesus Christ, I mean, his son, Jesus Christ, was a gift to us so we can have eternal life and not damnation. Oh, bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Give Jesus some praise. Just think about that gift. And he gave it to us freely. Just think about that free gift that we get from God through his son, Jesus Christ. Just think about the gift of salvation. Just think about the gift of eternal life. Just think about the gift of being a new creation. Just think about all them gifts that we get freely from God through his son, Jesus Christ. We are blessed beyond measures. So when I think about that gift, who thank you, Jesus. When I think about that gift that God has given us, and then God wants us to give gifts to others. It shouldn't be so hard for us to give gifts to others. If God gave us the ultimate gift, the gift of everlasting life through his son, Jesus Christ, that we can spend eternity with the Father, the Son, forever and ever and ever. It's not an ending thing, you know, so that we didn't have to go to the lake of fire. So we didn't have to go to the lake of fire, which I would call eternal damnation. We are blessed by the gift that God gave us. And since God gave us gifts, he want us to give gifts to others as well. Are you ready to give gifts to others? Whether they're financially, property, or whatever that gift may be, are you ready to give it freely to others? So when I think about that gift, I thought about a message. And this message is, give, give freely. Give, give freely. If God can give us, give freely. Why we can't give others, give freely through the gifts that God give us. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. See, when you know that God is giving you all these gifts, then you realize that God is giving you all these gifts while you can't share with others and give them some gifts too because you only got your gifts because of God. And because of God, why don't you honor God by giving your gifts to others because God wants us to bless other people as well too. Praise your name, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. See, giving gifts, so it's my title of the message is Give, Give Freely. Give, Give Freely. And as you know, I come from the Christian perspective. I comes from the Christian perspective. So giving gifts to others sometimes can be hard. And when you're working out of that flesh, and you're working out of that greed, and you're working out of that desire, and you don't want to let nothing go, you just don't want to let nothing go. It's all about me. You're self-centered. You're self-seeking. The hardest thing to do is give a gift. The hardest thing for you to do is get a gift. Because you don't want to let go what you got. You can see a person in need. You can see a person in want. And you don't care. You're not going to freely give them a gift. You're not going to give them a gift. Because of who you are in the flesh. That greed then set in. That self-centeredness then set in. 
that pride done set in because it's all about me done set in and I don't care about the other person. So therefore, if you understand me, so therefore, if I'm not going to give them a gift, told you sometimes it's hard to give a gift. Sometimes it's hard to get a gift. But I'm here to tell you today, if you really turn your life over to Jesus Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to empower you and to give you the ability to do the right thing, you will be able to give gifts freely in the name of Jesus. You will be able to give gifts freely. I didn't say you can do it on your own self-will. I said it take God. So you got to turn it over to God. You got to turn your life over to God and let God be the head of your life and let Jesus be the head of your life and let them work in you and influence you so that you can give gifts freely. So you can give gifts freely to anybody. You can give gifts freely. Well, I know you can give gifts to your kids. A lot of you can give. Some of you even have problems giving gifts to your kids. Some of that. Sometimes you have a problem with that. You don't want to let it go. Or to a cousin or a relative or a close friend. I ain't giving them that. I ain't giving them this. You know, sometimes we get stuck like that. But God want us to give freely. God want us to give gifts freely. You got to you gotta give gifts in order to gain gifts back. So it works two ways. Giving gifts to, to others sometimes can be hard. God wants us to give gifts freely. God wants us to do that. In order to give gifts freely, you must give from your heart. In order to give gifts freely, you must give from your heart. But I'm going to have to break that down a little bit. You must give from your heart. But you need to get that new heart. That's in Christ Jesus. See, I wrote this. I didn't think about this, but now the Holy Spirit is bringing it to me. See, when you when you give it from the heart, you can't give it from a stony heart. Uh, you can't give it from a grudging heart. Uh, you can't give it from a hateful heart. Uh, you can't give from an envy heart. Uh, but you gotta have that righteous heart. Uh, that righteous heart that comes through Christ Jesus. That righteous heart that comes through studying the Word of God. Uh, that righteous his heart that let the word of God sink inside of you and let it become a part of you and then it let it run out. So first of all, the Holy Spirit is telling me, dig this, you got to get the right heart. <laughs> See, you can't give from the heart unless you got the right heart. So now, now, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. So now how do you get the right heart? You get the right heart by turning your life over to God, by turning your life over to Jesus, by turning Turning your life over to the Holy Spirit. So you can't give freely from the heart until you give yourself to God. Bless that wonderful name. Until you turn yourself over to God. And you allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life. So you can have that new heart. So that stone heart, that cold heart can be done away with. So you can now walk in this righteous heart. In this loving heart. In this kind heart that you can only receive from God through his son, Jesus Christ, who will allow the Holy Spirit to come down and dwell in you and make you a new heart in the name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Do you want to give freely? If you want to give freely, oh, bless that wonderful name. You got to get with Jesus. You got to get with Jesus. Oh, bless that wonderful name, Jesus. In order to give freely, you must give from your heart. You must give from your heart. But now I gave you the description of the type of heart that you got to have. And I told you how you get that heart. <coughs> so if you don't have that heart right now, my first advice is to tell you to turn your life over to Jesus. Make Jesus the Savior and Lord of your life. Huh? You understand? Get in the righteousness of God through his son, Jesus Christ, huh? so that you can have that 
good hide uh, so you can have that righteous hide uh, so you can be able to give from your hide because as long as you got that stubborn hide uh, as long as you got that cold hide uh, as long as you got that envy hide uh, as long as you got that greed hide I'm here to tell you you're not going to be able to give gifts freely in the name of Jesus talk to him Holy Spirit because these words not in my notes but I love it when the Holy Spirit intervenes and help me bring something out to you because it's nothing but God working through me, through his power, by the power of the Holy Spirit. So you got to give freely from the heart, but you got to understand, first you got to get the righteous heart so that you can give freely from the heart. Talk to me, Jesus, in the one name. When you believe in Jesus Christ, then you allow the Holy Spirit in the word of God to change your heart. I guess I did write it down. To change your heart. Then you will be able to give gifts freely and out of love you have for God and Jesus. Out of love you have for God and Jesus because now you love God and Jesus. And you see all the gifts that they give you. You have no problem with loving others by giving them gifts as well. And you will be doing it from your heart because you have a new heart in Christ Jesus. Thank you for the detail, Holy Spirit. As long as you are in Jesus, as long as you are in Jesus, you are in freedom. Therefore, if you will be able to give freely, as long as you are in Jesus, you are in freedom. And because you are in freedom, you will be able to give freely. Jesus said, I will set you free, and you'll be free indeed. That means Jesus said, I will set you free from that cold heart and give you a new heart, and you free indeed. And now you got a righteous heart, and now you got a good heart. So now you can give freely. Now you can give gifts freely. When you used to have a struggle with giving gifts, when you used to have problems with looking out for somebody else. Oh, bless that wonderful name, Jesus. You know, you had a problem there when before, but now you don't have that problem because you can give freely. You can be free. You can give freely because you've been set free from the bondage that was stopping you from giving. In Jesus Christ, you are blessed. To give gifts freely is a gift from God through the Holy Spirit. To give gifts freely is a gift from God through the Holy Spirit. So it's not nothing that you really do by yourself. You still need God to work through you, through his spirit that now dwells in you. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. That's why we must allow God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God's word to lead us into all righteousness. To lead us into all righteousness. Bless that wonderful name to lead us into all righteousness. When you give from the heart, you are given freely. When you give from the heart, you are given freely. Already gave you the description of the type of heart that you need to have. Already told you how to get that heart. And you can't do it on your own. You got to get on your own. You got to get it through Jesus. That's why I love Jesus. That's why I preach Christianity. That's why I preach about Jesus Christ and being a follower of Jesus Christ and seeking you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's why I talk about renewing your mind in the word of God because that's why I talk about you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. That's why I let you know through the word of God that you are victorious in Christ Jesus. Can't nothing hold you down. That's why I let you know can nothing separate you from the love of God. That that's in Christ Jesus. That's why I let you know. Oh, shut up, Papa. That's why I let you know. You can't go into the desires of the flesh. You must live in the spirit. That's why I let you know all these things. Because you are in Christ Jesus. And if you are in Christ Jesus, you've been set free from a stony heart. You've been set free from a cold heart. 
You've been set free from an unloving high. You got to understand you've been set free in the name of Jesus. So now you have a loving high. And because you got a loving heart, you're able to give freely. Now you have a heart that want, that have compassions for people. But now since you have compassion for people, you can give gifts freely. But before it ended, I believe you had a struggle. I know I had a struggle with some people. Yes, I can look out for certain people, but I couldn't just look out for anything. Anybody, but thanks be to God that he blessed me now that I don't have to know you and I can still look out for you because I've been blessed because I got a new heart in Christ Jesus. The old heart done passed away. The new heart is in me now. Oh, and I became new on the inside when I got this new heart in Christ Jesus. Do you want to be able to give freely? Do you want to be able to give gifts freely? Do you want to be able to do that? Then I'm going to tell you right now, the first thing you got to do, you got to get with Jesus. You got to submit to the power of the Holy Spirit. You got to be obedient to the Spirit. You got to be obedient to God's Word. You got to let it come in and shape your mind. Because when it's shaping your mind, it get down into your heart. And when it get down into your heart, that's who you become. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. And then you will be able to give freely from the heart. Oh, bless that name. When you give from the heart, you are given freely. When you have a willingness to give, you are given freely. See, summertime, some of the time, the verse is going to talk about it anyway if I get a chance to get to him. I'm going to read it anyway, though. When you have a willingness to give, you are given freely. See, when you have a willingness to give, you are given freely. See, the willingness is that I want to give, but I don't have it to give. But if you get a willing heart, to give and you don't have it to give. I want you to know today that it's acceptable unto God. I want you to know today that God sees it and God will bless you for your willingness even though you don't have it to give. Just by you having a willingness in your heart to give even though you don't have it to give. God is looking at your heart and he knows what your heart is saying to him. And he's blessing you for the willingness to give. And when you have a willingness to give, you understand. I know God will bless you anyway. Because God is a good guy. Yes, he is. God is a good guy. Yes, he is. My God is a good guy. Yes, he is. Your God is a good God. Yes, he is. Your God is a good God. Yes, he is. He gave you that gift. He done gave you the gift. He done freely gave you a gift. Now he wants you to freely give gifts to others. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. And then it goes on in here, and we're talking about in 2 Corinthians 2. It says, um, don't give to make it easy for someone else. Sometimes people confuse people with the message that they bring sometimes. And they think people are supposed to say, well, this is a sacrificial gift, and I'm going to give this. I'm going to hurt myself so that the other person can have it easier. But that ain't what the word of God said. He said, don't give to make it easy for somebody else. Then bring hardship and burden on yourself by giving. So he said, if you got the willingness to give, but you ain't got it to give, because it might bring hardship up on you and make it easy for somebody else, he said, you ain't got to give. I'm going to just tell you about the word of God. And it's in 2 Corinthians. If you want to know, I'm going to read it. I'm telling you about the God now. About all this sacrificial giving, suffer, suffering, don't pay your bills, giving all that stuff is not the word of God. It's not the word of God. It's not the word of God. It's not the word of God. He said, if you ain't got it to give, don't give it. But if you ain't got it to give, I know one day he will give you it to you so you can give it if you got the willingness to give. He will help you get your life together so that you will be able to give. There was time in my life that I wasn't able to give. You understand? And there was time in my life I wanted to give and I wasn't able to give. But I thanks be to God today that I'm able to give because the lifestyle he changed in me, now I'm able to give because there ain't no be no hardship on me. 
he understand when I give. See, he don't bring hardship on me when I give. He don't tell me to give and then to get hurt and make it easy for somebody else and make it hard for me. Nah, that ain't the word of God. God ain't laying like that. God tell you if you ain't got it to give, I appreciate your willingness to give. But if you do have it to give, then you give. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Study it. It's in 2 Corinthians 8. I'm going to read it. Because I'm not, I'm not I'm going to go without reading it in the name of Jesus. Because it's something you need to go. Something you need to know. When you give it to support others in lack, you are doing the will of God. When you are helping the brothers or sister that's in lack, you are doing the will of God. Bless your one and nine. So when you're giving a gift freely to somebody else, you understand you are doing the will of God. And when you're doing that, you are being a minister of God. You are being a servant of God. And God is going to get praise for it. And God is going to be lifted up for it because of you. Because of you freely giving gifts in the name of Jesus. So you have given God some praise. So when they see you and they know that you represent God and you represent Jesus and you freely giving that gift to them, they know now that's because of God that you're doing it. And because of God that you're doing it, now they want to get in touch with God. Now they want to get to knowing a little bit about Jesus because of that free gift that you just gave them. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. So you understand, uh, when you're giving up a free gift, uh, I want you to understand when you're giving a free gift, I want you to understand that you're honoring God. <laughs> I want you to understand that you're giving God some praise. Uh, you're talking about praising God. And don't be scared to give up free gift and praise Him that way then. Uh, I know you can holler and I know you can sing, but can you give a free gift up uh, so that God can get some praise so you can praise God in your walk you can praise God in your action see faith without works is dead so if you want to be real then you got to learn how to give gifts freely in honor of God in honor of Jesus because when you're doing it you got to understand that you're doing the will of God bless that wonderful name Jesus if you see a Christian Brother or sister lacking. I mean, not having sufficient, not having what they need. You should help them in their time of need, vice versa. So otherwise, I'm telling you, Christian brothers and sisters, he said, we're supposed to look out with one another. We're supposed to look out for one another instead of fight against one another. You know, that's what he's saying. He said, y'all supposed to look out for one another, but the thing that's messed up, you're always fighting against one another. But he said, that ain't the way that it should be in the name of Jesus. That ain't the way that it should be. I want to go over a few Bible verses with you, then I'm going to call this message over. But first, go with me to 2 Corinthians 8. Go with me to 2 Corinthians 8. 2 Corinthians 8, and let's read verse 8. Paul is telling, I'm going to read 8 and 9. Then I'm going to go down, so I'm, I'm going to skip and go down. But uh, Paul is telling them on giving, he said, I speak not by commandment. I speak not by commandment. This is not commandment. But by occasion of the forwardness or the eagerness of others. And to prove the, the sincerity of your love. And to prove the sincerity of your love. See, you can reveal your love when you give out free gifts. When you're giving out free gifts. When you're giving gifts freely. You're showing your love. For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich. Look at here. Even though that he was rich. Yet for your sake he became poor. Yet for your sake he became poor, that you through him, that you through his poverty might be rich. That through his poverty that might be rich. He left heaven, came down here, walked this negative, crazy world, got beat on, spit at, 
cursed at, mistreated in all kind of fashion and forms. Got hung on the cross. He got beat. He got whipped. He got pierced. <laughs> For us, unto death. He took the beating unto death. He shed blood for us so that we can be saved, which is a gift from God. For us, I want you to understand this. He was rich, but he came poor. He came all the way to poverty for us to give us the free gift of salvation by the shedding of his blood. But blessed be the God, his father, raised him from the dead. He walked the earth, I think, 40 days. He walked the earth 40 days. Then he went to be with the Father. Then he arose and went up to the Father. To be with the Father. He sat at the right hand of the Father today. And when he got to the right hand of the Father, he told the disciples to go over and I forget, but in Acts, in the book of Acts, he told them where to go. And they went over there and they stayed there. And then he poured down the Holy Spirit on them. The comfort of the Holy Spirit. So today, that's a gift from God. Today you get that same free gift from God, the gift of the Holy Spirit from God. But remember, he was poor. He was rich and he became poor for it. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now go down 11 with me. Now therefore perform the dawn of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. So you got a readiness to will. You desire to will. You got a you got a will to give, to give freely. And now it's time to make the performance also out of that which you have. He said out of that which you have, out of that what you have. So you're giving freely from your heart, but you're giving out of what you have. You're not going to give out of what you don't have. You're not going to put yourself into bad situations. Let me read on. For if there be first a willing mind, see, you got to understand what I said now. Because he said, for if there be first a willing mind, it is acceptable according to that a man has. If you have a willing mind, which can be a willing heart, it is accepted according to that a man has, according to what they have. See, some people are going to try to squeeze you to get more and more and more, and you ain't got it, ain't laying like that. But they will beg you to death to give and give and give and give and give and you ain't got it. But you're trying to honor in them. Honor God. Honor God. According to that a man has and not according to that he has not. And if you don't have it to give, if you can't give it, don't beat yourself up. Don't feel bad about it because you can't give the way they want you to give. You got to give according to what you have, not according to what you don't have. So don't let nobody make you feel bad or try to make you squeeze that you ain't giving enough when you're giving the best you got, when you're giving what you have. Don't try to make them make you feel bad and tell you you're not doing the will of God. Because you don't have it to give. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. If you have it to give, you give. If you don't have it to give, don't. God know your willing mind. God know your willing heart. And that's all that matters. That's all that matters. Don't beat yourself up no more about that. Don't go home frustrated, upset, and mad because I didn't have it to give. And don't worry about other people talking about you behind your back. That person couldn't do this and that person. Don't worry about all that. One day God's going to bless you so that you can be able to bless them in the name of Jesus. Because God know that you had a willing heart. Up. God know your heart was willing. And that's all that counts. And one day. You will be able to give more. Stay with Jesus and watch your work. One day, you'll be able to give more. Stay with Jesus and watch your work. <laughs> because Jesus blessed a cheerful giver. <laughs> he didn't say how much you give. He said, Jesus blessed a cheerful giver. <laughs> so if you want to be blessed, you got to be a cheerful giver. <laughs> you understand? God bless a cheerful giver. <laughs> you understand? Be content with what you do. For for if there be first a willing mind, then no, go to 13. 
For I mean not that others man be ease and ye burden. Remember I told you about that verse? He don't want you to give that you make it easy for somebody else and then you turn around and make it hard for yourself. No, he don't want you to give like that. So if you don't have it to give, go back up to the other verse. So if you don't have it to give, you don't have to give. But if you're able to give, and then you give. But you don't bring a burden on yourself by giving. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Just to run it up. You don't give and put yourself in burden and get yourself high as shit. No, you don't want you giving like that. God, see, people got God twisted. See, God is a loving God. God's not going to have you do nothing to hurt yourself. God ain't going to have you do nothing to put yourself in high shit. I know they say trust God. I trust God all the time, but I also know how to be obedient to the word of God. But I also know how to be obedient to the word of God. And when you're in obedience to the word of God, then you find out things work better. Don't follow man. Follow the word of God. If you don't know it, get into it. Get into the word of God so you can start knowing what they're talking about, if it's true or not. So you need to know the life from the truth. That's the main reason to study the word of God. So you can know what you're following. So you can know what teaching you're following. Is you following the word of God? Is it really on the word of God or is they on their own thing? And using Jesus as a French tree. Huh? That's what you got to know. That's what you got to know. That's why you got to get into this word for yourself and find out. And find out what this word is saying. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. For I mean that not that other man be easy and you be burdened. It ain't land like that. But by an equality. That now, at this time, your abundance may be a supply for their wants. That their abundance also may be a supply for your wants. That there may be equality. See, okay, one thing I want you to understand about this equality. The equality is not about everybody having the same amount, first of all. Because sometimes people look at that and they think, well, in order for us to be equal, we all got to have the same amount. That ain't what he's saying about equality there. He said equality is if you see a brother or sister in need, why don't you help them out in their lap? Help them out. So that they won't be in need no more. Just like you ain't in need. That's equality. So you have the other person with their need. So one day, if they, if you just happen to be in need, uh, or you in lack, and then it's their responsibility, thank you Jesus, to look out for you the same way. So that's where equality come in. It's not about everybody having the same amount of money. It's not about everybody having the same type of car. It's not about everybody wearing the same kind of clothing. It ain't about everybody eating the same kind of food. It, equality simply means that when a brother or sister is in lack, is that you help them out so that their needs can be met. And then after it turns around, and then you in lack, a brother or sister ought to help you out in times of need. That's what that equality is he's talking about. That's what the equality is. You look out for one another's lack. You help one another out. You support one another. That's what equality is all about in that particular verse right there. Understand it. Because it took me a long time to get it. And I really didn't get it until maybe Friday or maybe Saturday. Maybe last night is when I, he told me exactly what that word really means. I was searching. I was med meditating on it, trying to figure it out. But I always trust the Holy Spirit. I always rely on the Holy Spirit because I know that the Holy Spirit can teach you. I know that the Holy Spirit teach me. So equality, understand it. Don't get it twisted. Now, I might not be able to read all these verses, but let me go through 11 through 15 right quick. Might not be able to break them down. Oh, I'm going 11 now. But, but but by equality, that then it goes on to say, As it is written, he that had gathered much has nothing over, and he that had gathered little had no lack. So he's saying the equality is that everybody needs is taken care of. Equality that everybody is looking out for each other so that nobody lack nothing. Don't mean we got to have the exact same thing. Doesn't mean we got to have the exact same amount. Understand that. Get that to you. Go with me to 2 Corinthians 9. I'm going to read 6 through 8. And I hope this message touched you. I hope this message bless you. 
But this I say, he which so sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which so plentifully or bountifully shall reap also bountifully. See, only God know if you're doing bountifully, if you if you're planting a lot, or if you're not planting a lot, because only God knows what you have. Sometimes people got a tendency to look and say, oh man, all that person gave is $2. You know, oh, that person ain't giving nothing, but I'm giving 20 or I'm giving 30 or $40. And so I'm giving, so I'm spending abundantly and he's giving up $2, but he's only making, he might not be making, but maybe fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a year. When you turn around over here, you might be making fifty or sixty thousand dollars a year. So when you compare it like that right there, you might find out the one that's giving the two dollars are giving more than the one that is giving the fifty dollars. Bless the wonderful name Jesus. So Jesus know how much a person is giving from their heart. Not from what you do or not from what you see. So don't judge if somebody is given sparingly by your eyes, by what you see or by the amount that they give. Because you don't know. Only God's know. And try to make a person feel bad and say you can dig down farther and you can give more than that. Oh, no. Only God know how much you're giving. So when you're giving, understand this. <coughs> You're not giving to the pastor. You're not giving to the church, but you're giving to God. But you're giving to God. No, when you give your offering, no, when you give free gifts to people, you're doing it to God. You're doing it for God. And when you're giving your gifts, you're giving your gifts to God. And only God know the true meaning of your gift. Don't let others discourage you in your giving. Because sometimes they can talk about you and make you feel bad because you're giving the best you can, but it don't meet up to their standards. You understand? When you're going to let their standard determine if you should give or not. Well, I'm going to tell you, I don't care how much you give. You give according to your heart in the name of Jesus. And that's, that's all you got to give. And you're giving the best that you have. That is what you give. That's not... When you're giving the best you have, you're not giving sparingly. You're giving the best you have in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So then it goes on to say in 7, Every man according as he purposed in his heart. He said according to how he purposed in his heart. So let him give. Not grudgingly. Don't give it out of grudge. Or of necessity. Don't do it out of commandment. For God love a cheerful gift. So he's saying, understand, I don't care how much you give. Don't do it gradually. Don't do it out of requirement, but be a cheerful giver. So he said, give it from your heart and give it to him cheerfully, the free gift. So when you give a gift to somebody else, do it cheerfully. Uh, when you bless somebody else that's sitting like, do it cheerfully. Uh, you hear me? Don't do it grudgingly. Don't do it out of requirement, but do it out of love. Do it out of love for God. Because when you love God, you love others. Do it out of love. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. So be a cheerful giver. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Be a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. He can make grace increase. He can give you more and more grace. That you always have an all sufficiency in all things. And he said he will make sure that you supplied in all things. God said he will make sure that you have all things that you need. He said you will be sufficient in all things. Not some things, he said all things. And that you may increase. And that you may increase in every good work. And that you may increase in every good work. I hope this message bless you. I hope this message touch you. I hope this message lift you up. May God continue to bless you. Have a wonderful week. Praise God through your week. Study the word through your week. 
Read the word through the week, whatever you may do. Listen to some good spiritual music. Uh, just lift Jesus up in the name of Jesus and walk that Christian life. See, when you're living in that Christian life and you're walking in that life and that new creation that you are in Christ Jesus, then I want you to know uh, that you're giving God some praise. Then uh, You always talk people, I was talking about give God some praise. Uh, but if you really want to give God some praise, let the people see God coming at you. If you want to give God some praise, let them see Jesus coming out. If you want to give God some praise, let him see the Holy Spirit empowering you and helping you do the right thing. If you want to give God some praise, let him see the Word of God working in your life. Because that's how you give God praise. You want to give God some worship? Oh, let's do the same thing. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. A bless that wonderful name, Jesus. A bless that wonderful name, Jesus. There's no other name greater than Jesus. There's power in the name, Jesus. There's strength in the name, Jesus. There's peace in the name, Jesus. Bless Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. I hope this message touch you, and I hope it bless you. As you know, I'm on YouTube. On my channel is Thomas Patterson. Feel free. I'm also doing Twitter, too. Feel free to go there, too. But one thing I want you to know, I want you to know that God loves you. And I want you to know that I love you. And have a blessed week in the name of Jesus. Be blessed.